This part of the test will measure your listening ability when it comes to the conversations and lectures in academic settings. You will listen to a recording and then answer questions about it. You will be able to take notes while listening and you can listen to the recording only once. The questions must be answered in the presented order. During the exam, you will not be allowed to go back to the previous question. The questions will be about the main idea and the supporting details. Some questions will be about the speaker's purpose or attitude. Answer the questions based on what is stated or implied by the speaker. Sometimes you will see this icon. It means that you will have to listen to a certain segment of the recording and answer a question about it. Now listen to the lecture. Good day, students. Today we'll talk about the Forest of Fontainebleau, a wonderful forest in France. Over 280 square kilometers of this enormous ancient woodland are located approximately 55 kilometers southeast of Paris. The Forest of Fontainebleau is full of history, biodiversity, and recreational activities. Let's explore the forest's historical significance first. Numerous archaeological finds that date back to prehistoric times have revealed that people have lived in the Forest of Fontainebleau. Later on, the forest was used for royal hunting by the French monarchy, especially under King Francois I. He also built the beautiful Chateau de Fontainebleau, which would house successive generations of French kings and queens. We discover a wide variety of plants and fauna as we investigate the biodiversity of this enchanting woodland. The Forest of Fontainebleau is a botanist's dream, with over 1,000 plant varieties, including oak, beech, and pine trees. More than 200 different bird species, several mammals like deer and boar, innumerable insects, and reptiles can all be found in the forest. This forest sandstone formations, which have been sculpted by erosion into amazing designs and serve as a habitat for a variety of organisms, are one of its most distinctive features. It is quite amazing how well these many species maintain their delicate equilibrium. The Forest of Fontainebleau is a well-liked location for a variety of activities when it comes to leisure opportunities. There are various ways to discover the beautiful sceneries of the forest, including hiking, mountain biking, and horseback riding. The aforementioned sandstone formations make rock climbing or bouldering particularly well-liked since it offers difficult and beautiful climbing routes. Additionally, tourists from all over the world visit the Chateau de Fontainebleau and its neighboring gardens and parks as a cultural and historical attraction. The significance of the Forest of Fontainebleau goes beyond its confines. For starters, it is essential to maintaining the area's water and air quality. The forest also acts as a major carbon sink, absorbing and storing carbon dioxide to lessen the consequences of climate change. Last but not least, it boosts regional economy through tourism and leisure activities. The Forest of Fontainebleau is now home to a variety of native species, but it has also experienced the invasion of certain non-native ones, such as the American gray squirrel and the Chinese mitten crab. Although these species can be fascinating, they frequently interfere with the forest's natural equilibrium and make conservation efforts more difficult. The Forest of Fontainebleau is a remarkable example of the splendor and diversity of nature. To sum up, it is a priceless treasure for France and the rest of the globe due to its historical value, abundant biodiversity, and recreational opportunities. As we examine this forest, let's be mindful of its special qualities and the crucial part it plays in the ecology at large. What is the main idea of the lecture?
What does the professor mean when she says? It is quite amazing how well these mini species maintain their delicate equilibrium. Why does the professor mention the American gray squirrel and the Chinese mitten crab? Why does the professor say, the forest of, Fontainebleau, contributes to local economies? Sort the following as either, part of the forest of Fontainebleau, or, not part of the forest of Fontainebleau. According to the professor, why is the forest of Fontainebleau important for the global ecosystem? Now listen to the conversation between two people. Good morning, John. I noticed that your homework was incomplete this week. Can you explain why? I had a really busy week, and I struggled to manage my time effectively. I apologize for not doing my best. John, I understand that life gets busy, but this has been a recurring issue. It's important to prioritize your studies. You need to develop better study habits to succeed in this course. You're right. I'll try to do better next time. I promise. I just find it difficult to balance everything sometimes. I understand that it can be challenging. Do you have a study schedule in place to help you manage your time better? Not really. I just do my homework when I find the time. Creating a study schedule might help you stay on top of your assignments. It's important to allocate specific time slots for each subject. That's a good idea, Professor. I'll try that. Thank you for acknowledging that, John. I'd like to see more effort in the future. Remember, success in this class requires consistent effort and dedication. I'll make sure to ask for help if I need it. I really want to do well in this class. That's a great attitude. Remember, you can always attend office hours if you have questions or concerns. Don't hesitate to reach out for help when you need it. Thank you, Professor. I'll keep that in mind. I appreciate your advice and support. You're welcome, John. I believe in your ability to improve, and I'm here to help you along the way. Thanks, Professor. I'll definitely work on seeking help when necessary. I'm glad to hear that, John. I look forward to seeing your progress in the coming weeks. 
Keep up the good work. What is the main idea of the dialogue? How does the professor feel about John's recurring issue with incomplete homework? What does the professor imply, when they mention office hours? How does John feel, when he admits he didn't do his best? What is John's intention for the future regarding his studies? Now listen to the lecture. We will talk about the Danube River's remarkable biodiversity. Due in part to the many landscapes it passes through, this intriguing watercourse is home to a wide variety of plants and animals. This covers a wide range of ecosystems, such as those in the Alps, lowland plains, and enormous wetland areas. As a result, countless of plants and animal species, many of which are rare or endangered, Call the Danube home. The abundance of fish in the Danube is one of the most notable aspects of its biodiversity. The river is home to more than 100 different fish species, some of which are unique to the area, such as the Hushen or Danube salmon. Due to overfishing and habitat loss, several fish species, such as the sterlet and the European sturgeon, have seen dramatic population decreases. There have been initiatives in recent years to reintroduce these animals and rebuild their natural habitats. The Danube's biodiversity is also notable for its abundant bird life. One of the most significant bird habitats in Europe, the Delta area alone is home to more than 300 different bird species. The Dalmatian pelican, the red-breasted goose, and the white-tailed eagle are three of these species whose conservation is particularly at risk. However, there are a number of risks to the Danube's vegetation and biodiversity. Water quality and the well-being of the river's ecosystems have been significantly impacted by pollution, notably those from industrial and agricultural sources. In addition, habitat fragmentation brought on by dam construction and other infrastructure initiatives make it challenging for animals to travel and get essential resources. There is still hope for the future of the biodiversity along the Danube, despite these obstacles. Through concerted work and international cooperation, 
International initiatives like the Danube River Basin Management Plan seek to maintain the distinctive ecosystems along the river. These initiatives support sustainable development in the area while simultaneously preserving the region's unique biodiversity. The Danube River, in conclusion, is a priceless natural resource that is home to a staggering variety of plant and animal species. We must address the myriad risks that these ecosystems confront and cooperate to spread sustainable practices throughout the area if we are to assure their continued survival. What is the main idea of the lecture? In the lecture, what does the professor imply about the Danube's fish population? Based on the lecture, how does the professor feel about the future of the Danube's biodiversity? What did the professor mean when they said? There is still hope for the future of the biodiversity along the Danube, despite these obstacles. Why does the professor mention the Danube River Basin Management Plan? Why does the professor say that the construction of dams and infrastructure projects is a threat to the Danube's biodiversity? Now listen to the conversation between two people. Hi there. I was hoping to speak with someone about the possibility of changing my course schedule for this semester. Of course. I'm here to help you with that. Could you please let me know which course you'd like to change? Well, I was thinking about dropping my current chemistry class and switching to a biology class instead. All right. Let me take a look at the biology classes we have available. May I know the specific reason why you want to make this change? The thing is, 
I've really been struggling with my chemistry course, and after giving it some thought, I've realized that studying biology would align more closely with my personal interest and future career goals. I understand. We do have some open slots in Biology 101 at the moment. However, I should inform you that making a course change at this point in the semester could potentially affect your graduation timeline. Oh, I hadn't considered that before. But after weighing the pros and cons, I still believe it's worth it, especially given how much difficulty I'm having with chemistry. I see your point. I'll proceed with making the course change for you. Once it's done, I'd recommend reviewing the new course syllabus and reaching out to the biology professor to inform them about your decision to join their class. Thank you so much for your assistance. I really appreciate your help in making this transition smoother for me. You're welcome. Remember, if you have any other questions or need further support, don't hesitate to reach out to our office. Good luck with your new course, and I hope it's a better fit for you. What is the main idea of the dialogue? Why does the student want to change their course? How might changing courses affect the student's graduation timeline? What does the administrator ask the student to do, after making the course change? How does the student feel about the help they received from the administrator? Now listen to the lecture. Stegosaurus was a remarkable herbivorous dinosaur about 150 million years ago during the late Jurassic period. This famous dinosaur roamed the earth. Stegosaurus had characteristic armored plates over its back and a spiky tail for defense. 
Due to the plate's resemblance to roof shingles, the name Stegosaurus roughly translates to roofed lizard. Let's now examine this amazing creature's characteristics, habitat, and social structure. The series of plates along the spine of the Stegosaurus was, by far, one of the most distinctive characteristics. These plates served a variety of purposes, including defense and thermoregulation. According to research, the plates were packed with blood arteries and may have helped with heat transfer or heat storage, depending on the surroundings. These plates also acted as a powerful deterrent for predators. Another noteworthy feature of the Stegosaurus was its little cranium, which contained a brain around the size of a walnut. Despite having little brains, Stegosaurus were not as stupid as often thought. According to recent research, they exhibited more complicated behavior and even interacted with one another via noises and visual displays. Let's now discuss the Stegosaurus's environment. They grazed across what is now North America, especially in the western parts, where they could find plenty of vegetation to graze on in the form of lush forest and broad plains. Due to its small head and low-to-the-ground posture, Stegosaurus mostly consumed low-lying vegetation. There is still much to learn about social behavior. While some researchers believe that Stegosaurus lived in packs, others hold that they were loners. What is known is that these gentle giants frequently served as prey for predators like the terrifying Allosaurus and relied on their physical characteristics and possibly herd behavior for defense. The Stegosaurus is still one of the most well-known and fascinating dinosaurs because of its distinctive features, environment and behavior. Our knowledge of this fascinating creature will only expand as more evidence and research come to light. What is the main idea of the lecture? What does the professor imply when mentioning that the stegosaurus plates may have played a role in thermoregulation? What is the professor's attitude when discussing the social behavior of Stegosaurus? What does the professor mean when saying? Some researchers believe that Stegosaurus lived in packs. Why does the professor mention the Allosaurus?
sort the following aspects as part of the stegosaurus characteristics or not. 